The U.S. Veterans website stresses that the source of the sarin gas using Ghouta chemical attacks was the United States Department of Defense by Turkey. And the Syrian Arab army continues its national duty in pursuing armed terrorist groups in different regions, having successful operations against their hideouts. The Austrian Antoine Sardar narrates stories about the brutality of terrorists who kidnapped him in Edouard, Homs. This is News in English from a Syrian Arab television in Damascus, and we start from the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, who called on his U.S. counterpart, John Kerry, in a telephone call to make Washington use its influence to prevent Kiev from using force in East Ukraine and push it to hold dialogue, paving the way for conducting a constitutional reform. A statement released by the Russian Foreign Ministry said that Lavrov referred to the deteriorating situation prevailing in southeast Ukraine. Going back to our field news, in Hama, two citizens were martyred while ten others were injured by a truck bomb in Al Karzali village of the governor's southern countryside. Terrorists blew up the truck with a huge amount of explosives near the school of the village, which resulted in the martyrdom of two citizens, ten were injured, and the total destruction of the school and six other houses. The Syrian Arab army continues its national duty in pursuing armed terrorist groups in different areas of, the, of Syria, having successful operations against their hideouts in several locations and foiling infiltration attempts by them. A closer look in the following report. In Damascus countryside, scores of terrorists were killed or wounded in Renkus Valley near a Sahra village. A 70-meter-long tunnel used by terrorists in moving weapons was discovered in Krum village. In Dara, Army units foiled infiltration attempts by armed terrorist groups from Al Yadudi village to the safe areas in Al Yarmouk area and from a Nazihin camp to the consumption company in the camp in Dara. The source added that the army killed and injured all members of the armed terrorist groups and destroyed their tools. The army units also destroyed terrorist gatherings in Busra al Harir and Inkhil and the other nearby areas. In Homs, a military source said that army units killed and injured a number of terrorists in al mishrfet al bisi to the east of Misade and al ghassibiye in Ad-Dar al-Kabira in Homs countryside and destroyed their criminal equipment. In Aleppo, an army unit foiled terrorist groups infiltration attempt to Al-Amiri in Aleppo city, killing and injuring a number of them. A military source said that the army units also killed and injured a number of terrorists and destroyed their tools in Haritan, al Leramun, Bani Zaid, al Misilmi, Khan Toman, al Rashidin, al Haidariye, Tel Rifat, and the surrounding Aleppo Central Prison, and al Sukkari in Aleppo City and its countryside. In Idlib countryside, army units targeted terrorists in the villages of Tel Selmo, Abu Zuhur, and Jisr Shuhur. Many of the terrorists killed were Chechen. Antoine Sardar, an Austrian citizen who came to visit a friend of his in Homs city in central Syria, fell as a victim in the terrorist hands in the Loire neighborhood. Sardar said that the kidnappers of Jabhat al-Nusra had harshly tortured him, stolen his money and locked him for months. Till the Austrian government has known about that, so they immediately called on the Syrian government, which have liberated him. I was kidnapped by a terrorist group, I think it was called Nusra. They took me from my house. They beat me real bad. They took all my money and they locked me into a cellar attached to a wall by a chain, handcuffed. Well, they were asking me all the time uh, what was the cause I came to Syria. They told me if I 
if I were a spy for the Syrian government. Which I denied. After taking my money, I thought they would just get rid of me and, and, and shoot me. I was begging for my life. I told them that I have five kids, that I have to have, have to take care of my, my kids. They kept me in this basement for almost four months. After my after that my health was at risk on Sunday. I think it was the uh, 6th of this month, um, the Austrian embassy called me and they, called, uh, they told me that somebody from the, Aust from the Syrian authority will call me and uh, we'll, we'll see how they can get you out of this area. And indeed, uh, somebody from the, Aust from the Syrian authority called me and uh, he asked me first where I was standing. I told him I was standing in front. There is a church in, in this area, in our area. I told him I was standing just in front of the church. I, he told me if I can come to the checkpoint. I told him I, I've been uh, uh, watched. I have been watched and uh, somebody is following me all the time. He, he told me if I cannot uh, just try to mislead, uh, to mislead him. I told him, sir, we'll try. It's, uh, it is my, in my interest. Um, that's why I went to the church, pretending that I will go to church, uh, to uh, stay there, stay there for a while. And uh, this church has two doors. I went out from the other door, and after going out. I was running as fast as, as I could to reach the checkpoint. And there, that's where uh, I was welcomed by the Syrian army, by this gentleman from the uh, Syrian authority. And uh, if it wasn't for him, for his help, I wouldn't be saved. And I really thank, 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 thank everybody that the Austrian embassy and the, the Syrian authority for helping me getting out and going home safe. And it has been a catastrophe for me. I'm, I'm trying just to forget all I have suffered in this time that I was kept by this terrorist, but I, I still can't because they are still hurts deep. Still marks on my body. They were hitting me on all places. They didn't care. They didn't care whether I'm a human being or or an animal. The United States Veterans website has disclosed new information about the involvement of Turkey in the chemical attack launched against Istanbul Ghouta last August. The website stressed that the source of the siren gas was the United States Department of Defense that was delivered via Turkey. Morning, the, following. the U.S. Veterans Today website said that the serene gas used in the chemical attack launched against Eastern Ghouta came from the U.S. Defense Department, which established laboratories network that produces weapons of mass destruction in Georgia. The website added that the toxic gas was conveyed to Turkey to be passed to the terrorists linked to Al-Qaeda organization. This confession was broadcasted by the Syrian TV for one of the terrorists who took part in planning the attack. At the beginning of 2012, I was informed by the Emir of my group that there was an extremely secret issue. I was informed that there were weapons in Turkey that should be conveyed via borders to the city of Deir Zor, and then other members would take it to Damascus. Meanwhile, the British The Independent newspaper said that Erdogan was changed from an example of the strong man in the Middle East to a dictator made of tin because of his practices against Syria and his support of the armed terrorist group there. 
The British journalist Robert Fisk said that more evidence is being discovered about Erdogan's involvement in the events in Syria and the relationship between this role and Erdogan's relationship with Obama. In the meantime, the British Daily Telegraph newspaper said that at least 500 terrorists from Britain traveled to Syria to fight against the Syrian government there. A senior official at the British government said that the terrorists coming from Syria constitute the biggest security threat against the UK. Earlier, American writer Seymour Hersh reiterated that U.S. intelligence officials have concluded that Erdogan government played a role in the chemical attack in Eastern Ghouta last August. Hersh revealed in an article three days ago in the journal London Review of Books the critical role played by Turkey's Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his officials in the chemical attack carried out by armed terrorist groups in Eastern Ghouta near Damascus on August 21, 2013, in an attempt to push the United States to launch a new aggression against Syria. The British The Times newspaper said that the United States forces are supervising the training of terrorist groups in Jordan. The Daily quoted one of the terrorists as saying that he moved from the south of Syria to a training facility in the Jordanian desert where he spent 40 days training by American officers. He added that he trained on the use of Kalashnikov, machine guns, mortar bombs, land mines and anti-tank missiles, referring that he received 500 US dollars at the end of his training. The Swiss television broadcast an interview with a terrorist who was recruited through the internet to be sent for fighting in Syria. The terrorist said that those who are called jihadists in Syria do not apply Islamic rules and this pushed him to return to his homeland in the first available opportunity. He added that terrorists in Syria are divided into three categories. The first is for suicided bombings, the second for transferring weapons and fighting, and the third for organization and communication. The interviewer said that there are three centers for recruiting terrorists and sending them to fight in Syria. Western diplomatic sources revealed that the United States President Barack Obama's administration has urged Israel to attack Syrian army to prevent it from advancing into positions of the armed terrorist groups trained in Washington trained, sorry, by Washington in Jordan. The American World Tribune newspaper quoted a source as saying that the United States wants Israel to stop the advance of the Syrian army towards areas in the south of the country. The sources added that this is the first time a request by the United States for an Israeli intervention in Syria is revealed. The newspaper affirmed that the U.S. trains more than 1,000 terrorists in the framework of a program run by Washington and Jordan and financed by the Saudi regime. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Now, the latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.